Hey guys, so I am... I'm not back. In this video, we're going to talk about how relative dating, absolute dating, and marker fossils were used to determine the subdivisions of geologic time. <coughs> that was a lot! The Earth has a very long history. 4.6 billion years of history. The age of the Earth is based from the radioactive isotopic dating of meteorites. The oldest dated rock from the Earth is only about 3.8 billion years old. Why? Uh, I don't know. The oldest known fossils are simple-celled organisms found in rocks that are 3.8 billion years old. The first multicellular organism evolved around 600 million years ago. The history of the Earth is recorded in rocks, which what we call the rock record. Now, the rock record is not a video documentary. A large amount of analysis and interpretation is required to extract information from rocks. But the rock record is inherently incomplete. Some events do not leave a record or are not preserved. Some of the rock record may have also been lost through the recycling of rocks. Right? Remember the rock cycle? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Now, preserved in rocks are fossils or the remains and traces of plants and animals that have lived and died throughout the Earth's history. The fossil record provides scientists with one of the most compelling evidence for Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. This is about the increasing complexity of life through time. Right? So the crux of Darwin's theory of evolution focuses on the elimination of inferior species gradually over time through a process called natural selection. Now this figure, the geologic time scale, which is the timeline of the history of the Earth, is based on the rock record. Geologic time is divided into hierarchical intervals, the largest being eon, followed by era, period, and epoch. Okay? The subdivisions of geologic time is based on significant events in the Earth's history as interpreted from the rock record. The mass extinction, which led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, occurred around 66.4 million years ago. Now, remember, this mass extinction event may have been pivotal in the race of the dominance of the mammals during the Cenozoic era. I don't understand. I don't understand, Paige. I don't understand. Now, let's have an activity. What you need to do is you have to fill this table up. Afterwards, you have to make a pie chart with respect to the geologic time scale provided in the table. Are you kidding me? Now I'm getting angry. Fuck. I will give you five minutes to accomplish this. Okay, so while you're doing this, listen. So one of the first to recognize the correspondence between rocks and time is Nicholas Steno. Okay? Steno's principle, namely superposition, original horizontality, and lateral continuity, became the foundation of stratigraphy. Again, stratigraphy is the study of layered rocks. So this is the correct answer. Okay, so remember, you have to make a pie chart with respect to the geologic time scale provided in the table. Assuming that you have done the pie chart, this figure shows relative proportion of the major subdivisions of geologic time. Now, if you notice, the Precambrian, which is the Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic, represents a large part of the geologic time, which is about 87%. Yet, we know very little of what happened during this period. Okay, so meaning the record is imperfect or incomplete. One of the earliest attempts to subdivide the rock record into units of time was made by Abraham Gottlob Werner a German geologist. Werner divided the rock record into the following rock time units from oldest to youngest. Okay? So we have the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. 
Werner extensively used the law of superposition to establish temporal relationship among the rock units. He states that within a sequence of layers of sedimentary rocks, the oldest layer is at the base and layers become younger as it goes up. Okay, so if you remember our previous discussion about this, yes, that's it. <laughs> so, I just want you to know that Abraham Werner is also considered to be the father of German geology. And he is also the proponent of Neptunism. I, what was that? That is the idea that all of the Earth's rocks were formed from an all-encompassing ocean. Fossils are also useful in determining relative ages of rocks. While working in a coal mine, William Strata Smith observed that each layer or strata of sedimentary rock contains a distinct assemblage of fossils, which can be used to establish equivalence between rock units separated by long distances. Moreover, he observed that these fossils succeed each other vertically in a definite order. Okay. So this figure shows the geological map of England and Wales and part of Scotland in 1815. Okay. And this one is Smith's 1820 map called a new geological map of England and Wales, which illustrates the complex geology surrounding Bath, England. So these figures are from NASA Earth Observatory. In contrast to William Smith, who primarily used fossils to identify rock layers, Charles Yell, a British lawyer and geologist, recognized the utility of fossils in subdividing geologic time on the basis of fossils. He was able to subdivide the tertiary by examining the proportion of living versus extinct fossils in the rocks. So the bottom line is, Fossils are essential in the subdivision of the geologic time. So this figure shows the evolution of life through time. The underlying reason for this definite and orderly succession of fossils in the rock record is... Dun -dun -dun -dun. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? Organic evolution. So we have studied stratigraphy, right? As we have said, stratigraphy is a branch of geology concerned with the study of rock layers and layering. It is primarily used in the study of sedimentary and layered volcanic rocks. Now, a subdiscipline is what we call biostratigraphy. Oh, my head. This deals with the use of fossils in the correlation and establishments of the relative ages of rocks. In the next video, we're going to study the geologic time scale. Okay? It's over. We are screwed. Now, we have this thing called index fossils. So, this figure or table shows some of them. Index fossils are marker fossils used to define periods of geologic time. So, ideally, index fossils are distinctive meaning they can easily be identified and distinguished from other fossils. They are widespread, meaning the distribution is not confined to a few locality. And lastly, they have limited geologic time range, meaning they lived during only one short period of time. Ultimately, the geologic timescale was assigned numerical dates from absolute dating through the radiometric dating of rocks.